All right, welcome traders. It is Monday, April 29th, 2024. One more day to go in this month. And a good day in the markets overall today. So markets ended the day on an up note. Uh, Tesla driving things higher. Our account hit a new all-time high today. Big up day for us. A lot of volatility just keeps flying out of the market. Stuff's closing left and right. So good day today. Closed a bunch of trades. And we're getting down uh, in our buying power. So we're going to have to keep putting trades on uh, right now. But luckily, there's a lot of stuff going on out there. So let's I take a quick look at the market. Then we'll look at our account. And we're going to talk a little bit about vacation planning uh, a tad here as well. I'll share with you a little bit about what I do to prepare uh, for vacation. I'm heading out to Lake Tahoe in a, about two weeks. And I really don't want to be tracking my portfolio. I don't really want to be trading a lot. I really don't want to be doing any of that stuff while I'm out. I just want to enjoy myself up in the mountains, uh, do some hiking, some boating, and some drinking out there. Uh, so taking the whole family. But what we want to do is we want to make sure that we've set up our portfolio uh, so that we don't really have to be watching it on a daily basis. And I think one of the things that's great about our style of trading is we don't watch the markets. Okay? We're not sitting here watching the markets 24-7, worrying about everything, uh, that's going on. In fact, uh, once the market closes at four, I'm not looking at it again till really the next day. I'm not checking in at night, not trading uh, over after hours. I mean, my day is done at four. Technically, my day was done today. Uh, well, I, I'll take that back. My day was done today uh, right at four because I put a trade on at the end of the day. Uh, but I was really done around two o'clock uh, for the most part. Just checked in periodically, but nothing going on today. Great thing about our style of trading is that you can make a bunch of money without being stressed and without being glued to a computer so that you can can go out and enjoy uh, your time. I saw something on Twitter this weekend where somebody posted, you know, that you, you know, life expectancy is like 77. You retire at 67. That means you've worked 50 plus years to enjoy only 10. Okay. And if that's your plan, uh, you know, something's backwards here. Uh, for everybody. So you really don't want to put yourself in that situation where you can't retire until you're 65 or 67. And then you have a limited amount of years to enjoy yourself. And maybe you're not in the shape you want to be in uh, to do those things. So I want to be able to enjoy myself now, been enjoying myself for, for years and continue to do that. Okay. While I still have the ability to do that. Uh, and you got to get you know, your priorities straightened around early on and really be jamming every dollar that you can into your investments and letting your money work for you and create that additional stream of income. Don't give up your job, okay? So you can go trade or something like that. You're just replacing one income for the other, okay? Eh, yeah, maybe trading is, you know, you don't have to work from, you know, to do anything, but you can work from home and all that stuff. You're cutting your money in half. Why would you not just keep plowing all the money in there so that you don't have to do either one of those things in a couple of years? Multiple income streams, whether it's from trading, whether it's from running your own business, whether it's from a salary that you're driving there, uh, maybe it's from dividends or who knows what else uh, that you may do, uh, little side hustles, things like that. You want to generate and have as many income streams as possible so that you can plow that money in there, let it compound okay, so that you can you can retire. And if you can hit a decent return, even at 2%, um, you know, 2% a month compounded monthly, you will double your money every three years, every three. Okay? In nine years, you should be able to double your money three times. Okay, So if I had a million now, I could go to 2 million in three years. I should go to 4 million in six years. I should be at 8 million in nine years, if you think that way. Okay? Or $100,000 know, to, to a million dollars almost in nine years. But if I'm plowing more money in, I can get there and increase that amount. So you want to get to you know, that point where you're doubling your money every three years pretty consistently without pulling out. Stop trying to trade for a living okay, and start jamming as much money as you can into there so that you can get financially free. All right, that's enough uh, lecture for me. Let's jump into uh, the markets. Let's take a look at where things were today. And... Let's take a look also here at the market. All right, here's where we ended up uh, on the session today. 
overall uh, breaking out of this downtrend just barely. It's a flat sideways day moving out of the downtrend. Uh, we are still seeing MACD, RSI, squeeze all rising, breaking out of the downtrend, hanging on to the 21 EMA. So if we bounce and move higher, you know, we, you know, we're going to be looking at, uh, you know, potentially maybe moving up to these previous highs. We've got some resistance levels up in here uh, that we'll have to contend with somewhere around 5170, 5180 uh, there. So, so some resistance there, but uh, overall not too shabby. And even on the weekly chart, yeah, you're in a bearish mode on the weekly, but bouncing nicely off the 21. It's a great opportunity inside week last week. So inside week means pretty indecisive. Uh, bears, bears are still in control, but you're not getting some follow through to the upside. We need to see this follow through to the upside this week. If not, uh, and we fall back in here, uh, we could be heading lower. So I'm not calling us this, you know, I'm not saying we're still going down or we're going up, but right now you're in a bearish mode on the weekly. You're in a bearish mode on the daily, trying to break out of this bearish mode. We need another day to, to really, you know, give us some signal. And tomorrow night, I mean, the market, maybe it's just anticipating uh, the the earnings uh, from tomorrow night. Uh, so I think you, you've you got to keep that in mind. Uh, some big earnings uh, coming out this week. And uh, today, not really anything. You had SoFi, which is a piece of junk stock, in my opinion, anyway, uh, which is back down to its lows. Uh, so everybody that loves, so I don't know why you love SoFi. It's a $7 stock. Okay. And it ran up to nine and that's all the way back to seven piece of junk. Okay. Tomorrow, you've got some nice earnings. You've got uh, PayPal, Lilly, 3M, McDonald's, all before the bell. You've got Amazon, AMD after the bell. Uh, so you've got some nice earnings uh, tomorrow. Uh, I think that's going to shape what we're doing. And then on Wednesday this week, uh, you've got uh, not, nothing nothing huge. You know, Pfizer, uh, Qualcomm, that's pretty much it. MasterCard, not a whole lot of anything on Wednesday. But Thursday, you've got Apple and Coinbase. So Apple, Coinbase, Block uh, as well. So those three, Moderna is something I'll be watching because I do like what Moderna uh, looks like as well here. Uh, and then Friday, really nothing you know, before the bell. Uh, Hershey, maybe. I don't know if there, anyone's even excited about any of those. Uh, so, But you have some decent uh, earnings this week. Good number. I think the markets will be hesitant until we start to see you know, Amazon and AMD after the bell tomorrow. Uh, then we'll kind of meander sideways and you know, unless, unless one or both of those tank. Okay? If they're both really, really good and everything else continues to hold, uh, we could be heading up into Apple, and then we'll see what Apple does to the market this week. All right, let's move on quickly. Um, we've got a nice bullish uptrend uh, going on oil, but it's a pretty nice pullback, not quite to the 21, uh, but the 21 is above the 50. You get an uptrend line. So overall, we are bullish uh, here, but you're running out of momentum on this pullback on the weekly. But if we look at the daily, Getting into a pretty tight triangle here, boy, uh, you know, this thing could go either way right now. It's looking like potentially it wants to break down on the price action. But if you look at the MACD, it wants to move up. Uh, but PSAR is bearish. So right now, things are looking a little more bearish overall on oil. Bearish trend on the daily. Bullish trend on the weekly. Perfect setup for strangles. So if you're not in strangles, uh, on oil, uh, which we are, uh, I think you should be. Uh, we're up uh, 20% in six days on one of our strangles. And depending on how that strangle acts and how oil acts the next couple of days, even a little more selling is going to make it uh, still very advantageous, uh, I think, to get in. Bonds, okay, one of my favorites uh, is bonds here. And if we're taking a look at what bonds are doing, uh, you know, here we go. Still in this downtrending channel. Just keep every week, though, we hit lows and sell off. Hit lows and sell off. Well, this week we've started off moving higher. So did we finally get a bit of a reversal candle uh, here? You had a hammer that didn't that uh, didn't materialize. Now you have a bit of a doji candle here. So the weekly, still, even though you're in a downtrend, I've been very long-term bullish. And then looking at the daily here, uh, I think this looks pretty 
pretty nice. I mean, MACD has been rising, breaking the zero line today. RSI is rising. Squeeze has reversed and is moving its way higher. And you're bouncing off the trend line here. Uh, overall, I like the way bonds are looking. A, kind of a hammer-ish candle here uh, last Thursday. Uh, inside day on Friday and then the you know indecision and then bounce today. So I like where we are on bonds. In fact, we had some bonds trades come off. Uh, one of our new campaign strategies at 120 days, that thing just came off. Uh, it's 120 day uh, naked put that came off. So we actually put another one right back on uh, in that. In fact, I got to make sure that I, I add that back in. Uh, but uh, that's a nice looking trade. Uh, we're doing we're doing well on these. All right, so naked puts. Uh, that's uh, in good shape here on bonds. So in fact, bonds. Well, we'll get into it in a minute. Bonds is now my largest holding. Uh, gold here, the nice pullback to the uptrend line here. Indecision candle today. It's one week, but a nice hammer candle. Uh, at the top last week. So the hammer's at the top. It's a hanging man candle. Now, it's not at the very top, but this, okay, bit of a shooting star formation here, a bit bearish, but then we got follow through. Then we dropped the hanging man uh, here. Gold just struggling at the top here. And you can see just moving sideways here with all the momentum coming out a bit. But just it's just coming back to that uptrend line, and it had gotten so far away that it's holding the 21. I like it here. We actually were able to put on uh, a naked put in here. So we did a 120 day naked put uh, in here. That one's up 4% uh, since Friday. We've got a 112 trade on 48% up. So that's looking pretty nice. Copper, copper is just continuing to plow its way higher. Uh, to me, it's just untradeable. If you got in at any of these pullback points, which were very few and far between, there's only been twice that we've had two days of pullback since this thing really got itself going way back here uh, in in March. So only only twice have we had two days of pullback, and both of those were met with pretty good selling. So if you're in it, uh, you're in it. You're you're doing well. You're you're enjoying life. If you're not in it, I just don't think there's anything you can do uh, here. Taking a quick look at the Nasdaq, still in a bearish mode. Here, even though we're bouncing, you know, we had broken the 21, came back up through the 21, bounced right off of this support, off of this previous pivot level, uh, bounced off support. So NASDAQ looking okay, but it's still a bit bearish on the weekly. And if we're looking at the daily, uh, it's still bearish. Is this a counter trend rally? And we're going to stop right here at the 21 and the 50 and keep and keep going back down. Or are we going to go up, test the downtrend line, and see if we can start to make, you know, some higher highs? Now, MACD, RSI, squeeze, all heading higher on the daily. So the daily looks pretty good, but you know, maybe you want to get a little bit of a, a break here, come up, hit the hit the uh, trend line, come back down, bounce off the twenty one, and off we go. We'll see what happens on the Russell bearish trend that you're breaking out of we're back above this long term uh resistance line that we had broken out of broke below and now we're hitting right back on it and if you look over here on the on the daily you're breaking outside of this downtrend line that could be bullish uh as well we'll see we're hanging on to the 21 what I really like, though, is I mean, look where we are on the 3 ATR. Look where we are on the 21 on both the daily, the weekly. Look where we are on the RSI. You're, you're dead on the 50s almost. Perfect strangle. Uh, we'll get a strangle on in here either tonight or tomorrow. Uh, we, we just closed one out today for a full winner. So that's uh, that's looking pretty good. Uh, love where we are uh, on the Russell. And then if we take a look at the last one here on the Aussie dollar, Gotta make sure I, I get it right so nobody's yelling at me uh, for saying Aussie uh, here. But if we look at this trend line, a nice uptrend uh, that you're in here on the daily, breaking out of this downtrend line that we've been in for quite some time. I'll probably draw this thing out, maybe closer to something along this line here. Okay. 
So you can see we're breaking out to the upside, but we're still just hanging around the 21, the 50, and the 200, all right in here. And if we look over here on the weekly, you're right at the 50 and the 21. Perfect strangle set up here. We're already in it. Uh, we got one that's three days old, and we've got another one that's 33 days old. Uh, both of those are nice as we move along this line. Nice to see this recovery in the Aussie dollar. All right, so there's where we are. If you wanted to do 6E, it's not quite the same setup. Uh, it doesn't look quite as nice as the Aussie dollar. And if you look at the British pound, it's also... It's also not bad. It's it's a pretty similar setup uh, to the Aussie dollar. Look at this downtrend line. It's almost perfect to where we finished the day today. Uh, then you've got an uptrend line in here. Um, so keep an eye on the British pound. Momentum is to the upside on this thing, and I think it could potentially take off on you uh, to the upside. We're watching the U.S. dollar sinking a bit here, uh, which is helping all of these currencies and everything else uh, that we have going on. So if we take a quick look, uh, here's the US dollar. It's been in a bit of a downtrend lately. I think we can get rid of a lot of these lines uh, on here and we'll keep extending some things out. Uh, overall, you get some resistance that's, that's coming up uh, in here, but we'll see how this... Uh, how it handles, but right now you've got a bit of a, uh, uh, a bit of a, a kind of pat, you know, flag pattern here. If we break to the upside out of this, let's just draw these top line. If we break out to the upside on this pennant, okay, bit of a bull flag uh, on this thing breaking to the upside, which didn't do today, would be very bullish. Uh, but if we can't handle it and we break down here, we'll we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, overall, VIX just dropping, volatility just coming out of the market, back down into the 14s. VIX just continues okay, to work its way lower. Eventually, you know, maybe it'll pop at some point. And the 10-year just off of its highs. All right, so uh, like a lot of what we saw here, uh, markets were led by biotech today. Uh, markets were led by consumer discretionary, your your Amazon and your Tesla. Semiconductors had a good day. And then utilities, pharma, real estate, all bouncing. Uh, materials uh, bouncing. Energy looks solid here. Industrials look good. Uh, techs, not so good, but bouncing. Uh, healthcare, kind of holding their own. So there's a lot of things not looking terrible. Communications, not looking good. This is your Google and your Meta. Don't like the way Google and Meta uh, look, or I'm sorry, Meta looks right now. And Google, I think, overshot a bit. Uh, and then we'll keep an eye on financials. We did place a trade today in the Active Trader service. If you want to know, see more about that, check out the video I posted earlier. Uh, that is from the Active Trader service, a little different than the Income Navigator service. Active Trader is more swing trading, scalping, uh, and... Uh, just, you know, bullish short-term trades or bearish short-term, just short-term trading. And we focus a little bit more on stocks uh, in there and maybe some ETFs. Uh, so keep an eye on that. If you if that's where your passion lies, uh, then check that out as well. Maybe you don't like just making consistent 2% every single month, month after month after month, or 3% as we're doing, and then go chase something else um, down there. Play your stocks. Okay, I do not like this candle here on Apple today. Okay. This is a pretty ugly shooting star candle uh, right here. Even though it's a bullish PSR trigger and everything's heading up, not a great sign that you couldn't break the uptrend. Uh, big shooting star candle here. The last time we had uh, a bit of a, a shooting star uh, type of candle here, and actually, this is not even a shooting star. This is more of a gravestone doji, and this is more of a shooting star over here. Gravestone doji does not look good on Apple uh, here. Microsoft does not look good. Not breaking this uptrend line in here, and uh, you know, still in this in this downtrend. Amazon 
breaking the downtrend today. That looks good. That's, you know, like I said, Amazon and Tesla. Tesla having a 15% up day. Uh, got some approvals in China, which is pretty, uh, for its automated driving, just gapping and rocketing up. So if you're in Tesla, you know, congrats to making that call. I think this was a great move back in here on Tesla. We couldn't get it on. We had a trade Tesla it did come off for a winner, uh, but I just missed getting in again. Friday was just, I just wanted to see some confirmation today. <laughs> we got it, but I was hoping for like a little bit smaller confirmation in here uh, to get long. So yeah, uh, we didn't make it. And then uh, Netflix really getting tight here. I think something has got to give up or the downside. If I had to guess, I would bet it would be to the downside on Netflix, but who knows? We'll we'll see what happens. All right, let's just jump into our account uh, today. Take a look at what happened in the account, uh, which was a great day uh, overall. All right, here we are in our regular trading account on the session. Uh, we ended the day at 248 on Delta, so very Delta neutral, 0.05%. Uh, Again, we just naturally, we got a little bit carried away but it just kind of naturally worked its way. We didn't do anything crazy. We didn't overreact. We didn't try to put on negative Delta trades. Uh, we were just letting the markets come to us uh, a bit uh, on it. Uh, theta uh, here dropping to 11.07. Well, you know, the volatility is just siphoning out of the market at a very quick pace. Okay, so we went from a 0.4 back to a 0.2 in the span of about a week. Uh, week and in, in, in change. Uh, however, net lick today, 482, 514, a new all-time high. So we're back to new all-time high in the account. So we're, we're one day away from closing this month out here, but it uh, looks like a new all-time high. Uh, we, and we managed to book another $4,000 in realized profits today. And what's even more exciting is my, my buying power without Bill is down around 37%. I need to get buying power on. The problem is I've got vacation coming up in a couple of weeks and I really don't want to spend any time on the market. So as things are coming off, I'm I'm going to stick to the core campaign trades. Okay, so the 112s, my strangles, my 120 day trades, my 112 trades. I'm going to stick to to keeping those on and putting some of those on sparingly, but I'm letting all of the spec stuff uh, fall off so I don't really have to watch it. Uh, here. So I'm now in vacation prep mode, which two weeks ahead of a vacation where I'm not going to check anything okay, is, is what I'll do. Many vacations, I have time to check. And if I'm hanging out at the uh, condo or if I'm on the boat or something like that, uh, then typically, you know, I have time to sit there and, uh, you know, trade and, and, uh, and be engaged. But when you're taking a family vacation, and it's active. We're going to be up and down, hiking in the mountains, boating a bit uh, all over Lake Tahoe. So because of that, okay, I don't really want to have a ton of trades on more than the norm uh, that I have to really watch because I just want to enjoy myself. So a uh, couple of different, you know, and if I go to Europe or I go somewhere where I'm going to spend a lot of time, not just relaxing, but an active vacation, I do try to pair my trades back. But the great thing about our style of trading is it's longer term and you don't have to watch the market during the day if you don't want to. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're up uh, six grand for the month in realized profits, 1.2% with a day to go. So we're probably not going to hit our 3%, but we're still up almost 14% year to date through four months. So that's not too bad. 14% in four months is three and a half percent a month. So we are averaging three and a half percent a month in realized gains, as well as in our net lick. So our net lick has uh, jumped up from where we started about 395,000. We did put 30 grand into the account uh, and now we're sitting at 482. Okay. So pretty nice. If you take the 30 out, uh, we're still up almost 60 grand so far. All right, so 60 grand in this account in four months, not too bad. Uh, there's a lot of people that would like to make 60 grand uh, in four months on like $500,000 uh, in cash. So, or on, four, on hard, 400,000 cash 
make about 60 grand. So pretty good return so far. Uh, we are smashing the S&P uh, almost by double. So we've almost doubled the S&P return for the year and it's April and markets are uh, doing doing their thing. So we're, we're in good shape. Let's just take a second and look at what we've closed uh, today. So had a handful of things come off today. First thing here was oil. Uh, we had 120 day naked put come off uh, at 40%. Then here on bonds, we had another 120 day uh, naked put come off for 40%. So right there, uh, a nice 1230 bucks. Uh, then we had a strangle in RTY come off in 20 days. So 20 days to hit 50%. And then we also had in bonds, we had a PDS that we took off for a winner. So we took a uh, put debit spread offer winner. We did get stopped out on the naked puts, but the put debit spread came up with a $1,360 winner. So 181% gain uh, overall on that particular trade. So we're doing we're doing great. And we still have tomorrow a long-term 112, most likely that we will take off. We have some things expiring tomorrow, a couple hedges and some put debit spreads. So most likely some of the PDSs and the hedges will probably negate the gains on the long-term 112 to an extent, uh, probably be a, be a bit of a wash, uh, but it's also going to clean up our account dramatically. Uh, so we're, we're really clean uh, in this account. And the last thing I wanted to show you, which I thought was interesting today, okay, and this is not by design necessarily, but here's how my account looks right now when it comes to buying power. Right now, bonds, are the number one trade that we have buying power wise using 22% followed just behind that at 20% on oil. And then you've got ES all the way down here at 14% and then gold at 12%. So the, the big four for me, okay, I'd like to, I'd like to see a little bit more in gold and ES, ES has been, you know, gold's been parabolic ES it's, I don't, I'm not short trades. So it's a little interesting to me why it's down here uh, so much. It's just that the volatility has come out of this market uh, as a whole. So with volatility coming out, ES has dropped. I still have a full complement of strangles. I still have a full complement in ES of long-term trades. I have some 112 trades. I have naked puts uh, that are 120 days. I also have naked put leaps in ES. So I am not short any normal trades that I would have on in ES, but yet my buying power has dropped so significantly that it's now number three. Okay, so bonds are number one, oil's number two, and right now ES pulling up the rear with number three and then gold. So my big four are still uh, still sitting right there. Uh, so we're in good shape. I, I like where we are uh, overall. And then 6A just behind there with about 8%. And then my bill uh, position is at 21% generating that monthly cash flow. Uh, that's awesome. Helping me pay for some hedges and things like that. All right. Uh, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button down below. So go ahead, read the description. If you like what we're uh, talking about, go ahead and uh, subscribe here. Give me the thumbs up. Let's see if we can get to 200. I would really appreciate it. Uh, if you're reading these or watching these and you're getting something out of it, give a thumbs up so you can help me out, help other traders out. If you're not a subscriber to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want to follow us trade by trade, see what all the other traders are doing, see what Igor's doing, Gabe's doing, all of our contributors are doing. Uh, most of our people are, are posting all-time highs. We're at an all-time high. What are you waiting for? Get into the Discord and find out what we're doing. And if you want to see not only what we're doing in the Income Navigator service, check out the video from this morning on stocks and jump into the Active Trader service as well. Make some money there. Uh, create another income stream for yourself. All right. Hope this was a great uh, video for you. Have a great rest of your evening, and we'll see you in trading tomorrow. Bye-bye.